Yeah, so we want to talk a little bit about possessives, which is obviously a popular topic for people working, at least in Vanuatu. Um, but uh, we've also got people like Danielle um, Barth, um, who's been working on this uh, in um, uh, Matika Pano uh, in um, Papua New Guinea. And so we're going to be extending the um, perspective a little bit further. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at um, possessive constructions in oceanic languages a little bit. Um, it's familiar ground, so we won't spend too much time on that. Um, and then, uh, when was it? Maybe just shortly before the break, um, or perhaps it was in Manfred's last talk, one of Manfred's talks, um, he uh, mentioned that it's an unfortunate fact that we can't often go back in time and find out what the historical derivation was of some of the features that we're interested in. And of course, this is true. We linguists of all people would really love to have TARDISes um, so that we can find out what was happening um, at the times that are, that are crucial for us. Um, but we believe that the data we're presenting today on synchronic variation suggests a path by which certain well-attested historical changes might have taken place in the kind of level of granularity and the kind of detail that we would hope to you know, possibly have if we had those wonderful time machines. We're going to do this by looking at the variable expression of possession in three different languages because we think that the uh, variation present in all three of those languages gives us um, possible indications of how we might have had the shift from uh, what started out, um, at, well, why we ended up ultimately going from direct possession in um, pre, I gather from talking to Paul very briefly, even just in the airport the other day, only direct possession before oceanic to an alternation between direct and indirect in oceanic to only indirect possession constructions in Polynesian. Just very quickly so we can orient ourselves. These are our field sites. We have Mataka Panau. Um, up in Papua New Guinea, we have Vera'a, which we've heard a little bit about today already, and um, in Kip, which is spoken in Hog Harbour, UBF, um, on the east coast of Santo. So as we're probably all familiar with here, um, this distinction that we're interested in here is be in between direct and indirect possession is fundamentally can be seen as either, I and mean, there is a certain amount of debate in the literature, but whether this is a semantic distinction, um, but it seems to sometimes map onto more or less cleanly what's, some what's also known as an alienable, inalienable um, distinction. But it's certainly one of the, however, it, whatever the semantics are that it expresses, it's one of the core structural features um, across oceanic languages. Um, in our experience uh, with the languages we're looking at, this is indeed um, fundamentally a sort of alienable, inalienable distinction, uh, but we'll show you um, some interesting variation that suggests that people are obviously happy to mess with that a little bit too. Um, so historically, what do we know about this construction? Certainly in Proto-Oceanic, um, the distinction uh, was there. Um, uh, Lichtenberg um, has suggested that the direct, indirect um, possession distinction was less rigid in Proto-Oceanic than it is in modern languages. Um, even allowing for the fact that there's some flexibility among them. Um, and I think that probably what he means by less rigid is that there was a less rigid semantic basis to the different formal <coughs> constructions. Um, and Lynch, Crowley and Ross in their 2002 um, uh, Bible um, tell us that um, basically this construction has been um, is widely replicated in three different forms. We have things like the um, direct possessives um, illustrated uh, at the bottom of this slide with the structure of his leg where you can see the possessive marker, third person singular possessive, is affixed, affixed directly to the head noun. We also have indirect possessive constructions um, where we have an uninflected possessed noun and an independent some kind of sometimes referred to as classifier. We don't mind calling them classifiers. Um, with a possessive marker attached to that. And we've heard a lot about them um, over the last um, two or three days uh, at this conference, so I won't go into them in too, mu too much more detail. Um, they've been reconstructed for Proto-Oceanic, the inventory um, for these possessive uh, classifiers has been reconstructed as um, having one car form for food, a moi form for drink, and a na form as marking general possessions. We've also um, got, as we were just talking about actually in the last um, paper, so that was perfectly introduced, um, these kind of associative um, uh, possession markers where we have a noun and then a preposition and another noun phrase. This particular example is from Nakanai um, um, in New Guinea, um, but we obviously we've just seen many examples and heard a lot more from people's comments after the last paper, suggesting that this kind of structure is quite widespread 
um, in Vanuatu as well. By the time we get to Polynesian, of course, as is well known, we've got a completely different system. We don't have this um, kind of option for direct possession. We've just gone entirely to indirect um, possession constructions with an A um, and O form, um, distinguishing different types of, of possessor or linker. Um, and um, there seems to be some kind of, you know, sort of, you know, very loose semantic relationship that suggests that the A forms might have historically been related to the things that were indirect possessions in languages further to the west and therefore further, you know, earlier in the family tree. So the first um, language we're going to look at some data from is in Kep, um, which, as I say, is spoken in northeast Santo. Um, it's a fairly um, orderly oceanic language in this respect. Um, as Ross will point out, it is by no means orderly in any other respect. Um, so what we get are examples um, like one through four on this slide. Um, so we've got examples here entirely of, uh, well, we've got the first two are examples of um, directly possessed nouns. So we, these are all the possessed nouns are in bold. I'm sorry, Ross, they are in red. I didn't think about people with colour blindness. Um, uh, so we th have things like noa senur, meaning their names, Nerech, meaning my blood. Um, and then we also have the indirect possession forms in three and four, where we have Nvat Boari, Heiramdur, and we have Nov Nangur, meaning our fathers, our, our elders, um, and our pig, illustrating both the general possessive marker and the consumable one. We do have constructions in Nkip of the noun preposition noun form that we were just talking about. The, um, so we can have a, a something like Papa Hen Shem, meaning the, the father of Shem, you would not have Nen in um, this situation and in Kep because that would mean his penis. Um, and so I imagine there's some kind of blocking effect going on there. Um, okay, um, the situation in Kep appears to be a rather rigid semantic classification. When I looked at any variability that might be going on and how people were marking um, possessives in my corpus, I had... <coughs> um, 87 different head nouns that were possessed um, across my corpus that I analysed at that time, and 85 of them categorically have occur in only one kind of construction, either only in the direct construction or the indirect construction. So there's next to no variation in NKEP. There are a very few number of examples. Um, the first one um, in 6A shows you um, the use, or 6A and B, shows you a metaphorical use, a child, um, which is used for referring to an arrow. Um, so an arrow is the, um, is the bow's child. Um, and this one shows um, alternation in sp between speakers using it or putting it into the direct construction, as it would be if it was a human child, and the indirect construction um, where you would put something that was a generally possessed alienable um, th entity. And you'll notice that these were both produced by the same speaker in one narrative. We also have um, an example, like uh, very few examples, like the one in seven. This was produced by um, somebody who at the time was eight, though growing up in an entirely and kept dominant family. Um, Shuliani produces double marking on child, um, in this case, Imavri um, Okay, so have you seen my child? So literally, have you seen my child, my, chi my child, mine? Yeah. Um, I'm noticing that not because it's particularly pervasive in, in KEP, but because it's going to be important for the Matika Panau to, to show you that it's there. The other place where we get variability is when we've got words that um, are subject to variation between uh, local um, etima and Bislama borrowings. So I have the words for mother, father, chief, and scrotum in my corpus, either in the local language or in Bislama with a borrowing. And in these cases, you can either get, as in the first line um, of eight, you can get the directly possessed variants, or so you can have Zenan, meaning his father, or you can have Papa Han, um, as in the second line. Uh, so um, where there is any variation in NKEP, in this largely, largely stable system, um, it seems to mainly occur with borrowed nouns um, and where there's metaphorical extensions on the meaning of an indigenous noun. So we're going to hold on to that idea, particularly the idea that you've got some kind of a semantic extension through metaphor. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Stefan to talk about Vera A. So, Vera A, um, in the Banks Islands, as you all know by now, um, there's a slightly different locus of variation here, um, and that's found when it comes to the expression of um, kin relations. So we get common nouns um, that are typically used in referential noun phrases, and then uh, vocative nouns um, used in 
uh, personal or personal nouns used in um, vocative ways. So um, what we basically find is um, kin terms like the following here. Um, so bound nouns meaning mother, father, and so forth. Um, so vivi, vivik would be my mother. Um, amak my father, igni ik my child, and so forth. Um, and they are obligatory um, suffix entering in direct and possessive construction, like in nine, um, vivarun nekarak. Um, so their mother got up. Um, or in ten, naram lumine amari vivivi. So um, told um, uh, her, or his, his father, his mother. Um, yeah, so we get the um, suffix on the directly possessed noun here. Um, so the equivalent to these, um, or these kin relations, um, can uh, are also evoked in these um, vocative uh, nouns here. Um, so what there for mum, uh, mom, uh, mum for dad, or also um, bishlama borrowings, um, old fella or papa, um, or tete for kid, um, bubu for granny, and so forth. Um, so you'd go like an eleven, um, calling your mother. You go ote ote wakin mingme. And or in 12, um, Papa no ra rosen na, so um, dead or daddy or whatever, um, uh, in this uh, vocative use here. Um, now you can use these um, vocative nouns um, to also occur in common noun phrases um, where they uh, enter an indirect possessive uh, relationship um, with the general classifier mu. Um, so in 13, um, you'd say, Ote mu vine vesirn diso, so um, his. Uh, uh, her mother um, then asked her. Um, similar here in 14, um, um, so then he said to his um, father, or in Bubu um, Muri, his uh, grandmother in this case. Um, so we see here um, this uh, exactly that variation um, between a direct possessive construction with um, obligatory suffix nouns, um, common nouns, um, and uh, indirect uh, possessive constructions with these um, vocative. Um, nouns. Um, so this is uh, not, um, well, we come to that, it's not super common in uh, in Vera, at least not in the corpus. Um, it's frequently heard um, in uh, sort of daily life, so to say. It seems to be a little bit restricted to sort of child-directed speech um, and to um, children um, you know, talking to each other. Um, now, in Matuka Panau, um, the situation is um, a little bit different in so far that it's taking this whole development a lot farther. Um, so we also have vocative kinship terms. Um, we use referential here, but then there is also other changes. Um, so there is semantic ex extensions, for instance, for big, um, being used for um, an older sibling, um, but also generic nouns like man, woman, um, used to express um, uh, kin relationships. Um, and this uh, development seems to be pervading the entire system in Matu Kapanau. Um, so uh, here's an example of this uh, big extension. So we get um, han da bok, um, big, um, is a descriptive term used for um, older sibling and also for elder. So if I say here is an 16, um, nga hau da bok, um, whatever that would be um, with my older sister, where we get um, the word big, um, preceded by um, the possessive classifier um, entry, this indirect possessive relationship, so my big one or something. Yep. Um, another example um, here would be uh, verbs, uh, words for, so this is quite similar to what we just saw for Vera A, um, words for um, father and mother, so mum, nen, um, that are then used uh, in our uh, Common noun, but a possessive noun phrase, um, indirect possessive construction um, with a possessive classifier preceding again, and then the vocative noun um, is in 17. So my mother gave birth to me. Um, a further um, extension is with uh, generic nouns. Um, it's a little bit um, like well, it's a little bit like in German when you say um, my man, meine Frau, um, and so forth. Um, so you just have a tamat for man, man, um, pine for woman. Um, and then uh, when you use these nouns in an indirect possessive construction, um, you'd say um, my wife, my husband, as an 18, um, my woman is then my, um, my wife, she died. Um, so the thing is that in uh, Matuka Panau, um, we find really systemic um, change of this. So you can see here um, in this table that um, 
that for all the uh, directly possessed um, terms, um, we're finding kind of equivalent um, equivalent uh, indirect uh, possessive constructions that express the same um, the same relationships. Um, and then for um, so quite interesting here is also this um, uh, this word spouse, so yawam, um, or your spouse. Um, and then you could uh, specify your spouse uh, man would be your male spouse, um, your spouse woman, your female um, spouse, and then that turns into um, your man, your woman. Yeah, and so, so you get these kinds of developments here um, throughout um, throughout the system. Um, and also, uh, we will see that uh, in Matu Kapanao, um, this is all um, also much more frequent. So you see here um, the uh, frequencies for different um, kinds of um, different relationships with the. Um, hang on, I can't see that very well. With the direct construction in. Uh, and the indirect construction in um, orange. Um, and so for some of these um, terms, uh, the indirect construction is quite uh, frequent in um, KEP. Um, uh, but then in Vera A, uh, it seems to be, um, you know, relatively, as I said, quite restricted uh, phenomenon, um, possibly restricted to certain um, types of uh, communicative events, like, as I said, child-directed speech. Um, and in Matuka Panau, um, there is um, you know, basically it looks like there's sort of a takeover of this uh, construction throughout the entire system, right? Um, so that's uh, basically um, what we uh, find. And um, so what we, so by way of summary, um, what we've looked at is uh, those three um, oceanic languages um, where we have this variation in the possessive systems. Um, we find uh, different um, sites of variation, so um, variation in uh, voc or using vocatives, um, in uh, like um, in place of referential nouns, um, in indirect possessive constructions, adjectives, um, or generic nouns, as we saw in Matu Kapanau, um, and also if we have um, borrowed lexemes from uh, Bishlama um, or Tok Pisin um, that uh, then enter uh, into the system, and um, we believe um, that this might add to this um, story of how. Um, Polynesian um, possessive, or the whole Polynesian possessive system uh, may have developed um, from an earlier system um, where, um, and this has already uh, been observed um, by Paul in his um, book on um, Fijian languages and also by John Lynch in an earlier paper. Um, basically, um, if we go here from um, proto-central uh, Polynesian would look um, pretty much still like um, the Melanesian system that we find today. So we have um, a direct um, possessive constructions um, for kin terms, pato relations, and so forth, and have a possessive classifiers here, food, drink, and general. Um, and then what we find in um, Proto-Polynesian um, would be, um, so no direct um, possessive uh, construction anymore, but instead uh, use an indirect possessive construction. And what our findings, so if we think that um, the variation that we find in our languages might reflect what um, could have happened at, um, to initiate those kinds of changes towards Polynesian, um, then we'd um, use um, the general uh, possessive classifier here to express um, kin um, and parto relationships and so forth. Um, and then, um, well, presumably, I mean, we're not entirely, or you guys might um, have uh, more ideas about this, but presumably something like the food um, classifier uh, being extended um, throughout um, the other, or throughout the system and, and, and being used for these other relationships so that we end up with this um, or R uh, contrast in Polynesian languages. So basically, um, what we're suggesting is um, that uh, that kind of variation that we observe that shift from direct to indirect um, constructions for the expression of the same kinds of um, relationships um, might um, provide sort of a um, sort of hypothetical story, a kind of um, you know, look back um, in through the time machine, so to say, I um, mean, to what might have happened um, earlier uh, in the development towards Polynesian. Um, so um, there are three um, rather desperate sources um, that suggest that expansion of indirect into direct domains. Um, and uh, we saw here, so we're going from sort of Nkep to Vera A to Matuka Panau, where um, the um, uh, so where the uh, 
domain is kind of a little bit different. Um, and then in uh, in Vera R um, at least, and also in Matlukov for now, it's the um, kin um, relationships that um, that really lead that um, that development. Um, there is still also um, the prepositional construction um, that uh, might uh, that would be inherited from Proto-Oceanic, so that still needs to um, kind of be part of this development. Um, and as I've already said, um, there might be um, some uh, role to play for child-directed speech in this whole development. So um, it's not um, not unlikely, as I've, I said, for for Vera R, um, that this is one locus or one um, yeah, domain where this whole development might have started out. Um, and um, and then this may have also been uh, the trigger for a like wider spread um, change um, or more. Um, wholesome uh, change, so to say, um, in a language like Matuka for now. Um, so thank you um, very much for your um, attention to this, and um, we thank these uh, funding agencies, various RAs, and also, of course, um, the communities and everyone um, involved in this research. Thanks very much. <laughs> the messy ones. Thank you so much. Question? Oops, just to be uh, strictly correct, you should note that there are some relics of direct possession in a few of the Polynesian outliers with uh, with some kin terms, which are probably not the result of uh, interference from their neighbors. Yeah. So, so I don't quite know how to deal with this. There's a bit of a paradox here. Yeah, on the one hand, you know, we're in our data, it looks as though the kinship terminology is the place of the innovations, mm. but then we also know that you know, cross-linguistically, kinship terms, partly because they're one of the ones that are used, yeah. Yeah, ones that are used quite frequently, can be quite conservative, yeah. Well, this, um, um, this actually, these these are uh, barely remembered in Mele, and I got, you know, several of them, in, but the, the new words that are most commonly used are exactly as you were describing, originally evocative terms, borrowed from Infare, I think, and uh, used with the indirect uh, class of uh, possessive Pattern, yeah. I just wanted to add on from Ross's that that's the case in um, Fakomai that there were a few directly possessed kin terms which Capel documented in the 60s, but um, they're not around anymore, so they've been replaced by vocatives with the um, uh, indirect possession. Yeah, just to just to add to what uh, Ross said, in in Fiji there are um, a three different areas uh, or two particular areas in eastern Fiji, very far apart, that have lost um, suffix possession for body parts, parts in general, but they retain suffix possession for kin terms. So that seems to be a, a universal um, and loss of suffix possession, um, but also for the development of. Um, a Polynesian possessive system. Um, I wrote something uh, in a rather obscure German journal um, in English um, about 2000, where I elaborated on my ideas about the de about the. Um, so I'll send you a copy of that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm?